Hi, welcome to Coding Droplets and thank you for watching this video. This is part 9 of .NET Blazor tutorial series. In this video, I'll walk you through Blazor Timer and how to dispose timer in Blazor after its usage. So below are the two points which we are going to see in detail in this video. The first point is usage of timer in Blazor. So I'll be showing you how to use timer in Blazor. And the second point is Blazor timer disposal or Blazor dispose timer. So disposing timer in Blazor is a very, very important topic. You might have heard some developers saying that the Blazor timer don't stop or Blazor timer not stopping. The Blazor timer run continuously. So that is not a problem with the Blazor timer. We have to dispose the timer in Blazor after its usage. We will be discussing in detail about that with some Blazor timer examples. Don't miss the upcoming videos in this channel. Please subscribe the channel named Coding Droplets. Also, don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will get notified once we upload new videos. Now, let's start the development in our demo project. This is the demo project which we have created during our previous sessions. If you are new to this tutorial series, you can open the tutorial playlist which contains all the Blazor tutorial videos by clicking on the card appearing on the top right corner of this video. Also, you can find the playlist link in the video description. So first, let me open any of the Razor component. So let us choose our counter Razor component file. And let us implement timer functionality in counter Razor component. So in order to implement that, I'm providing using system.timers, okay, fine. Now here, I'm declaring a timer here, private timer, I'm providing the name as timer. And in on initialized method, I'll do one thing. I'll initialize the timer here. Timer equals new timer. Okay. Now timer dot interval. This is an important property for a timer. So interval means uh, how often we have to execute some function. So the interval should be in milliseconds. So here you can see uh, the, it should be in milliseconds. So I'm providing thousand here. So that means this timer will get triggered in every one second. Fine. Now the next thing is timer dot elapsed. So this is an event. So uh, we can provide it in two different ways. First, I will show you how we can provide it in line. So in order to provide it in line, we can do it like this: center, then e such that. Okay. This is how we can provide. The method inline so here if you hover the mouse here you can see that sender is object data type and e is elapsed event arguments data type so we can provide it in another way as a, a separate method so i will show you that as well private void and we can provide some name for the method on timer elapsed or something we can provide any name and here we need two parameters the first one is object and that is for this sender so we can provide sender or whatever name you can give now even uh, elapsed event arguments and we can provide e for that that's it now here what we can do is instead of providing it in line we can provide it like this that's it so now the method now it will be a separate method uh, it will get triggered in every one second now the next thing what we have to do is timer dot enabled equals true so we have to enable the timer otherwise it won't work fine so now in every one second this particular method will get executed here something is showing uh, 
percent okay this can be nullable fine um, we can make it nullable okay <clears throat> now in every one second uh, this method will get executed so before implementing the method I'll do one thing here in our design I'm providing a span here style equals color red then let make it let us make it some bold font weight some 700 fine and I'm declaring one more variable here private string let it be a string uh, date time value okay and here inside this span I I need to show this date time value whatever value is in this date time variable we need to show that fine now here in on timer elapsed uh, what we have to do is we have to update the value of this variable so date time dot now to string and let us format it dd mm y y y okay h h m m let us show seconds as well okay now tt so tt will show am or pm fine that is enough so here now there is one point so once the timer got initiated so once this on initialized method is executed the timer will get enabled here and only after one second this particular timer function or this particular timer elapsed method will get executed so uh, what will happen is this date time value variable will get the value only after one second so in order to overcome that i'm just copying this and providing it here as well so in on initialized method we are providing the value or we are assigning a value to this variable and in every one second after that in every one second we will update the value this is what we have to do now so here in this span it should show the date time value this is what we are expecting and i'm running the application and here i need to show you an important thing so the application is loading fine now it is an index page so we have to move to counter page here and you can see that now it has shown the value but the value is not getting updated in every one second so if it is getting updated uh, what we need to do is we have to show the real or the updated time date time value here fine but it is not getting updated so if we are moving to our code and let us check whether this function or this method is getting executed in every one second so we can check that by creating a breakpoint here and you can see it is getting executed in every one second but and here the value is also getting changed but uh, it is not showing the value here in this inside this span so this is because now this timer is getting executed in every one second and there is no user interactions happening so the blazer basically doesn't know the state has changed so there is one option uh, okay I'll, I'll show you one more thing here so now if i'm there is a button here in the same counter razor component so if i'm clicking this button you can see the difference here the value will get updated so if i'm clicking this button immediately you can see the value got updated and if i'm clicking again the value got changed so this is happening because when a user interaction occurs blazer understand that so now i'm this button is placed inside the counter razor component so uh, blazer can understand okay uh, the user clicked the button inside counter razor component so the state of that counter razor component has been changed so it will update the ui so if i'm clicking here then the value will get updated and here also we have a text box so if i am changing the value of the text box we have already binded this value with uh, some variable so if i change the value and exited the text box immediately 
uh, the value will get updated here as well. So there also uh, Blazor can understand the state has changed. But how we can do this? I will show you how to implement that. So basically what we have to do here is we have to inform Blazor that the state has changed. So in order to do that, we can provide it like this, invoke async. And inside this, we can just mention state has changed. Okay, I'm clicking on hot reload. Oh, I think hot reload is not working. Let me rerun the application. Okay, now the index page got loaded. Let me open counter page. And you can see now the value is getting updated in every one second. So this is how we can implement the timer. So now let's move some more details about timer and also in uh, while explaining the topic, I told that disposing a timer is very really important. So I will show you why it is important. So for showing that, I'm adding one more line of code here, console.write line. And we are showing this value here in the console window. Uh, not in console window, we can see this value or we can, if we are providing console.write line, we can see that output uh, in our output window. I will show you that. So here, now I am running the application. Fine, now we are in the index page and I am moving to counter page and we can see that everything is working as expected. And I'm moving to some other pages like member list or home page, then coming back to counter again and we can see it is working fine but now the problem here is I will show you I'm opening the developer options let it be here oh not the developer options here we, we, we can see it in our output window so here we can change instead of debug, I'm changing it to Blazor Server App Demo. Fine, and you can see the value coming here. Okay, now again, I'm moving to some other page, Members. Okay, now we are in Members page, but still you can see the timer is working. The value is showing here in cons uh, the console right line is working. The timer elapsed method is getting executed so the timer is not disposed still it is working so if i am moving to any page you can see that it is working still it is working so that means the timer will not get stopped if the user navigate to a different page so basically here what we need to do is we have to only enable the timer or we have to update the value only if the user is inside this counter razor component. So to implement that, what we can do is I'm stopping the application and here we can provide at implements i disposable i disposable okay now we just need to implement a method here public void dispose okay now inside this we can provide timer dot dispose so timer dot dispose will dispose the timer now let me run the application okay the index page has been loaded i am opening the counter okay before that let me open the output window uh, of Blazor Server App Demo and let me clear everything and now nothing is working so now I'm going to counter raise a component and here you can see now in every one second we are getting the value fine everything is working as expected now I am moving to a different page so for example members and you can see 
the timer has stopped means it got disposed and if I am coming back to counter again it is working so now you can see the values are showing here so this is how we, we can dispose the timer after its usage so please don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video if you liked it so this is what I need to explain in this video hope you liked it so please subscribe the channel and please leave your comment so thank you all and see you in the next video